Okay, got a little more extra tape on here just in case. Let me show you the flay scar pattern up to this point. Some large flake removals. This was almost an overshot here. Once I have all the large flakes removed that I want, that'll be it for the uh, secondary biface stage. And then I'll thin the base out and put in the flutes for the preform. The, uh, the thing about the using a lot of force is it does dry flakes extremely fast at high speed. So that's what happened. It drove a flake just barely skimmed my finger but it did cut right through the tape okay I was talking about collateral flaking so I'm going to try to do the flake from this side to remove that hinge and there it is It almost looks like an overshot, but it's not. That was collateral. One flake this side and one flake that side met up in the middle. It's difficult to tell where one ends and one begins. But that's not an overshot. Try to move that. Not much force there. Still trying to remove that little island there. The easiest way to remove those is to come in from the closest, most advantageous spot and not try for the long shots. But since this is a Clovis, and long shots are, are what they used, I'm going to come in from here and try to clean it off like that, with a long shot. There's a lot of pieces that broke up there, but they managed to clean that off. Trying to clean that up here. Oh. 
remove that stub just to create another one or hinge. Okay, that's it for the large flake removals. It's going to be a preform with this next pass. So I'm going to grind it, dress the edge, get rid of all that waviness, and then put some flutes in. Switching to a smaller diameter tool. I'm just going to take short flakes to straighten that edge, dress it up. Now if this was heat treated, it would be flaking a lot easier. I could run longer flakes. So that's why I think that uh, during, uh, well, for the uh, secondary biface stage there was an option to heat treat it. I think they use that option whenever the stone appeared to be very tough. And wasn't flaking very easily. But this stone, this raw stone is very good quality so I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to uh, heat treat it or suggest it should be heat treated. really doesn't need it. I'm still learning these steps so Someone else out there has read the uh, the book on the Galt site that I showed in an earlier video and spot something that I'm saying that's wrong, go ahead and leave me a message. So I can get it right. It has little pockets of uh, hard material.
think that sunlight's working against me. Okay, that's, that's good enough. I'm going to try to put the fluids in. Bevel it. I think I'm going to do the flutes on this side first. Braiding the sides, especially down here, so when I grip it, it won't cut. It won't cut me. I'm just going to use the indirect tool to bevel it. Isolate that platform a little bit. And there's not much of a central ridge, but that's okay. That flute will still travel. As long as it's lenticular. Not much force is required for this, so I'm not going to hit it really, really hard. I'm going to, uh, the, the angle on that platform wasn't quite right. stop short. I think that's because of the hard patch right there in the middle. Let me do the other side. I'm just dressing it up a little bit. I noticed I had a lot of mass there. So when I try to flute again, it should run further. I just clean that off right now.
isolate it a little bit. Okay, that traveled, traveled a good ways. It didn't dive in to the middle, which is good. So now I'm going to try this other side one more time. going to be a little concave so I'm going to use the rounded part of the writing stone. I hope that shows up. Now this second flute doesn't need to be as long. It's already wedge shaped. I'm just going to thin the uh, very base of it. Isolate by removing flakes on either side. It's got a good area to travel. I'm going to grind that uh, platform a little bit more. I need, to, I need to dress that up. I could do this with a pressure flaker too. Okay. With more experience, it doesn't need to take this long. Okay, I'm gonna call that good. I may clean it up from the side. I may leave it like that. One long flute, one long flute, one short flute, and uh, it's a fairly large Clovis blade. So I'm gonna dress up the edges, uh, grind it one last time. And then the bio, then the uh, preform will be completed.
popping off really short flakes. I don't want any manufacturing errors or steps or crushing or anything at this point. Even though this is the preform stage, I don't want to have to do any damage control when I'm finishing up the point. Just want to be able to. Uh, Run some large flakes to thin it or and flatten it. And that's it. I don't have to worry about uh, fixing anything after the preform stage is done. Now it's got a little bend in it so I'm going to try to take that out I may, I may intrude into this flute doing that but that's fine that's what happened on the originals anyway running some fairly long flakes but it's just a habit of mine if I see where I could take a, a good thinning flake I'll take it but my primary concern is dressing the edge and straightening 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 it and taking any bends out of the blade making sure the base is going to be or the edges of the uh, hafting area are going to be straight. Now it bulges out here so I, I can remove some of this width without worrying about the overall design. I just ground it to uh, expose the natural platforms.
for the tip. Give it a little bit to shape it. Make sure that point is centered. It's not perfect, it still has some steps in it. But I'm gonna I'm going to try to remove those with a large flake. Okay, so I consider that preform completed. That's a Clovis preform. Now this could be cached in the ground for use later. I think a lot of these were cached. And all, all it needs is final blade thinning and sharpening and base grinding. So for the blade thinning I'm going to try to take off large fitting flakes. I'm going to start from the down here and work my way up to almost the tip on both sides running flakes in a collateral manner on both sides. Just a few, maybe three here, three there, maybe one large one here. As few flakes as possible to thin the blade and to remove any of these rough contours and steps and hinges. But there's no real damage control that I don't have to fix anything really. These are minor steps and hinges. There's no major bends in the blade. There's no major wave in the edge. The base is ready to be pretty much ready to be ground except for a few areas. And I'll pressure flake these areas on the base so that it's very very straight and I'll just percussion, indirect percussion the uh, blade. I'm going to uh, stop the video here and try to get some different lighting for this next stage. But this preform is complete.